Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School and I'm out here this morning collecting some sassafras root. I'm going to talk about that real quick and we're going to take that root back and we're going to make medicinal hard candy today. Stay with me. Now, a pair of anvil shears and a shovel, piece of cake for this stuff. That's what you want. Dig it up with a shovel, snip it off with a pair of anvil shears, take it back to camp, clean it up, take it back to your house and clean it up, whatever you're going to do to make your medicinal candy. But medicinal plants like sassafras, which are carminative, are great for making a medicinal prep that's much more enjoyable to take day on day in and day out. And it's easier to preserve over time sometimes than making some kind of an infusion or decoction and trying to preserve that to use that as a medicine without making a tincture. All right, so our sassafras tree has three distinct types of leaves on it. It has one that has three lobes. It has a leaf with no lobes on it whatsoever. And then it usually has a leaf with only one lobe as well. And we'll look for one of those real quick and show you one of those as well. There's one right there that only has one finger on it. Okay, so you've got one finger, no fingers, and then three fingers pretty simple. It grows really crooked, never grows straight. A lot of your offshoots are a reddish brown color. And sassafras is one of the main ingredients in sarsaparilla and root beer. And so it has a root beer smell to it. And we've gone down here on the ground and found a smaller one. And we've dug that root up. We're going to dig a couple roots up and take them back. And we're going to make medicinal candy with this tree. So like I said, a pair of amble shears comes in real handy for this and you can see kind of where the root starts and the tree stops there so we're just going to kind of chop those off get rid of our trees for the time being that we don't need and cut our roots up into this bush pot now why would you want to carry candy in the woods or make candy well number one for medicinal value like we talked about number two there's going to be a lot of sugar in this so it's going to be something that you could put in your mouth and eat on the trail and give you energy. Also give you a sugar boost if you needed it for some reason. And make your saliva run in your mouth so that you're not so thirsty. So we've got two nice sized roots in there. We'll get some water in here and we'll get this on the boil. Man, I can smell the sassafras coming off of that, boy. Ooh, it smells good. Okay, we've added liquid again to it now. So we're on our second boil down now. We've added liquid to it, and we're boiled down pretty well. I'm gonna give it about two or three more minutes. Then I'm gonna pull off the boil, and we're gonna strain this until we have one and a half cups of this liquid. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so now that we have our decoction of our sassafras root, we wanna strain that off, and this is a collapsible straining device by C to Summit. You can buy this on Amazon and it's really made for pour over coffee, but it works really well to strain things like medicinals as well, where you have put your mark or your herb in and you want to strain it off. You don't want any of that in the liquid. You can just pour all this off now. And anything that may come out of here other than the roots themselves, like pieces of bark and things like that, you can see those things get stuck to the screen. Then you can just clean that thing off and reuse it. But you've got strained liquid now that you can use for your candying or your medicinal prep. Okay, so going back the other way, we're gonna want one and a half cups of this sassafras decoction. So there's a half cup. There's one cup and another half. And I use this half cup measuring device because it just makes things pretty easy. I only have to have one of them. The next thing we're gonna need is we're going to need one and a half cups of just white sugar. So we'll use that same measuring device and we'll get one two, 
three of those. That'll give us that one and a half cup again. Then we need some light corn syrup. And we're gonna use three quarters of a cup of that. So measuring that is just gonna be a matter of going half. And then another half of a half, basically. And I'll scrape all of this stuff off into here with a spatula. Let's get a wooden carved spatula here to scrape all of the remaining sugar and syrup into there out of here. Now, the last thing we're gonna put in here is optional. And that is about a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I like to use just Watkins brand pure vanilla extract. So we'll grab a spoon here. And this is more like a tablespoon. And we only need a half a teaspoon. We only need uh, half a teaspoon. So we're not gonna put a whole lot of this in there. That's probably more than enough right there. Okay. Now, we're gonna put this on the fire and we're going to mix all this together until it is all melted before we start to boil. Then we're going to use a canning thermometer to try to get this up to about 310 degrees, which is crack candy temperature. So let's get over here on the fire and get started. So before we start to superheat this, I'm just getting it warmed up and mixing the ingredients together to kind of dissolve that sugar because there's quite a bit of sugar in there into this liquid. Once we begin to heat this up, we won't stir it once it gets to the boiling point. For now, while it's heating up and warming up, we can stir it to mix everything together good and make sure that we have everything dissolved in there. Okay, as we start to heat this up, we're gonna go ahead and put our candy thermometer on this rim and turn it to where we can actually read it so that we can see when that temperature gets up to where it needs to be. And there's another way you can test this at the same time that I'll show you guys here in a minute. And that's just with a bowl of cold water. And once it starts to get to candying temperature, you can drop a bit in here. And if it turns hard and cracks immediately and turns brittle, then it's done. And now we have to get this up to candying temperature. And while that's happening, we can do something else. And I think you can see there, we're looking at that from an angle, but you're Obviously, right around the 212 mark, or you wouldn't be boiling, and you're getting close to boiling now. So we're going to wait till it gets up into the red marks up there. And then it should start to froth up pretty good as well. And then we'll test it. Now, what you see in here now is beyond boiling bubbles. These aren't the type of bubbles you get when you're boiling liquid. These bubbles are from excess heat. And they're creating that chemical reaction in there that's going to cause us to become hard crack candy when we're done. But we're still only at about 250, so we got a little ways to go yet. Now, as your temperature goes up and the water starts to evaporate to where you just got syrup and sugar mixed in water that's kind of created more of a syrup, it's going to start to have a different consistency inside. And... When you pull it off and you drip it into water, if it turns hard and brittle immediately, then it's ready. If it doesn't do that, it's not ready yet. So we still got a ways to go yet because the stuff that we put inside is still, I can put my finger in there and I can smash it up. So it's not crispy yet. The other thing is it will kind of trace on the inside very much like soap when you stir across it like this. And it's not doing that yet either. 
All right, so we're starting to get close now. I'll show you what I mean by that. If you look at this bowl of water right here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stir this. And you can see a little bit of tracing going on as you're pulling it across. And when I drip that into the water, you can see when it splatters, it turns hard almost immediately. And as it's dripping off of here, it's turning stringy. That's a really good sign that you're pretty close. And then if you put your finger in there and move that around, you can almost pull that out of there. And now it becomes hard very quickly as it cools. That's kind of what you're looking for as far as the candy goes. And now you're really, really close. We're gonna get this out of the way. But I'm not getting more moving things. Because we're close to the point we want to turn this off and pour it into the mold. And that's gotta be kind of a quick process. So we're gonna use that same mold that we use for our pemmican. The same mold that I use when I'm making soap. And I'm just going to smear the inside of this really good with some lard. Does it stick to it here? Just get a good fine coating of lard all the way around this mold. Just like that. And then we're gonna take a little bit of powdered sugar and put it in the mold as well. And what I wanna accomplish with that is I wanna coat this mold basically on the bottom with powdered sugar and on the side. Just like that. And then I can take the remaining powdered sugar and I can pour it back in the box if I want to. And now we're ready to pour our candy into the mold. All right, so now we're ready to pour candy into our mold. We just need a couple things to hold on to our pot with here real quick so we don't burn ourselves here really bad. And again, we'll get our spatula here. Scrape any excess out of here and in. And now we're just gonna let this begin to cool. Got a little bit of leveling problem here that we need to address. Get this mold leveled up. Okay. So now clean up on this. We've just taken that pot and I've taken it right back over to the burner and lit the burner and filled it with water. And all of that candied goo will melt right off of that pot in water. It will rehydrate it. And if we just boil it, it's easy cleanup. We've also got to clean our candy thermometer, which I laid out here on the thing, and it's all sticky and nasty. We'll boil it as well. And now we just need to wait for this to firm up before we can cut slices in here so that we can break it apart once it cools. Now as this starts to dry, I'm gonna to begin to score it with a tool here into stick lengths. And then once it scores good like that, then I can make cross sections in it if I want to as well. And if it runs back together on you after the fact, and it's not quite dry enough yet, but you've already got a beginning score in there anyway. Always good to dust this knife a little bit with some powdered sugar when you're doing that. It'll help keep it separated as well. It's getting pretty hard now. It's gonna be hard to get it cut and scored. But we'll do what we can do here with a knife. right there but as long as you've got a score line in there you'll be able to break it once it solidifies the edges obviously are going to solidify before the middle okay now that we've got that we're just really going to let it dry now to the point where we can pop it out of the mold break it into pieces then we'll talk about storage all right once we've given this time to cool down we can kind of 
push the bottom of the mold and see if it's hard. And if it is, we're good. So I'm gonna take another towel and just lay it over the top of this real quick here. So we can get crumbs, things like that off of here. And I'm just going to smack this, see if it comes out. If it doesn't come out, then I'll just take the mold apart because that's what the mold's made for anyway. You can see that scoring. Made those come apart pretty easy. Got a couple pretty big monstrous pieces of candy there, but that's okay. There's a small one for a trial piece. We can try. Okay, so now, once we've got this, we're just going to kind of dust it with some powdered sugar. We don't need a whole ton of it here. Just need enough for to dust it all really good. Now, storing this, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of fold this up in the towel here for a minute, shake it around to get it all dusted in good. There we go. Nice. Now, storing this, we could do a couple different things. We could put it in a Ziploc bag. That's fine, as long as it's airtight. Or we could put it in some kind of a mason jar like this one. Put it up on the shelf. Just drop them all in. Pretty good. All right, and then put the lid on it, obviously, and put it on the shelf, and it's good to go. Mark what it is. But you're making a medicinal candy when you do this, depending on what you're using for your mark or what you're using to flavor this with. In this case, we used a little bit of vanilla and we used the rootstock of sassafras, which is a carminative. Vanilla is also a carminative. So both of these are good for the gut. If you got an upset stomach or something like that. But these are a great way to carry something on the trail as well that you can make at home and pre-prepare that is good old fashioned food in camp or on a trail and your grandkids will love it too, I guarantee it. All right, now we got the cat out of the way for a minute. So really the only thing left to do with this is the taste test and I have to admit that I've already tasted a couple pieces of this and shattered off the mold and things like that, but it is absolutely awesome candy. It's got that vanilla flavor to it, but also you can definitely taste the root beer sassafras flavor in that. It's a fantastic piece of candy to just enjoy. Obviously, it's going to take you a long time to get something down that big. You could make it a little smaller if you wanted to. Not a problem. The great thing about this stuff is virtually indefinite lifespan in a jar like this. It's going to be there, you know, for a long time. This Medicinal Plants book by Peterson, Eastern Medicinal Plants, that's the field guide that I use the majority of the time. And then a couple references to verify if I'm not sure about things. But I've been doing this long enough now, I pretty much know what I'm looking for. However, if you're looking for something that you need medicinal value out of, something that you're going to take on a daily basis or for a few days at a time, and you don't like to drink decoctions or infusions and things like that, you can always make candy out of them. One of the things that has a really bad aftertaste to it in a lot of ways as whorehound and whorehound was something that was a very common hard candy back in the mid 1800s and whorehound is a very good expectorant for cough and cold and things like that and so it was used in candy a lot but you could add sugar or honey to that candy when the, in, during the manufacturing process and it would take away a lot of that bitter taste that you would get if you just made some kind of a tea and you were trying to pour sugar into that thing or pour honey into that thing until you couldn't taste that nasty afterbite from the whorehound anymore. So you can use methods like this to make medicinal candies. You think about things like cherry cough drops. Cherry is an expectorant, and cherry cough drops have been around since probably the early 1800s. So this is a very traditional way to make medicine that's not so unenjoyable to put in your mouth and take. It's also something that you can make with any flavor you'd like. You could use any type of an essential or an extract like vanilla. We used a little bit of vanilla in this. You could use anisette. 
to make licorice. You could use orange extract to make orange. Anything like that you could use to make a flavored candy like this that will last a long time in a jar, in a bag, as long as you keep it airtight. Sprinkle a little powdered sugar on that to keep from sticking together if it gets hot. And you got something that's very enjoyable at home or on the trail. Guys, I appreciate you joining for this video. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business. For all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And stick around for this cooking series because I plan on doing some kind of offshoot videos like this. How to make candy medicine. Cooking skills help you do that. So there's a lot of crossover in things. And that's why I say all skills to self-reliance are relevant. Right now we're just concentrating on the cooking portion of self-reliance. I'm going to bring this up to the camera because now that I've licked all the stuff off of it, you can see how translucent and root berry color that is. That is just a perfect piece of candy. Mm -mm -mm.